Hey, it's Juniper, the rhyming whiz. Ever since I was a kid, I've loved poems. It all started with my amazing grandma and her incredible library. People would line up just to catch a glimpse. But when I turned 13, something really bad happened. My grandma left us, and because of a big business loss, my parents had to close down the library she loved so much. It was heartbreaking to see her special books being sold off. I felt so sad and lost without her and the library. Life went on, but one day, I spent spotted a real gem, my grandma's collector's edition book of Emily Dickinson's poems. I knew I had to get it to honor her memory. OMG, OMG, Mom, Dad, I need to have this. Please, please. Um, it's pretty expensive. I know you want this because it once belonged to your grandma, but honey, we can't afford this. And you're just 16. Do something fun, like some TikTok dances. Isn't poetry like watching grass grow? I knew Mom and Dad would never understand my love for poetry, so I decided to take take matters into my own hands. I took every job I could, from mowing lawns like a boss to delivering newspapers. I was working hard. One day, while I was sweating like crazy, Mrs. Peterson, our neighbor, approached me with an offer I just couldn't refuse, to babysit her toddler son, Tim. But I was a bit unsure. While Tim was as cute as a button, his older brother, Jim, was a handful. We were in the same class, and that dude had a special talent for getting into sticky <gasps> situations with his failed magic tricks. But beggars can't be choosers, so I accepted the job. So there I was, babysitting like a pro, changing Tim's diapers and trying to keep Jim out of trouble. And one day, Jim called for help, all tangled up in chains while attempting a magic trick. I helped him out of the tangled mess, all the while laughing my heart out. <laughs> you really need to be careful with your magic, Mr. Magician. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. But you know, it's all part of the magic charm. How about being my assistant? Every magician needs one. One day in the library, I was reading a poem, and Jim looked over. What's so fascinating about those words? Poetry is like a secret language of feelings and thoughts. It's like life in a nutshell, bro. You should try it. And he did. For the first time, I had a friend who showed interest in poetry, and I appreciated it. One day, Jim and I were hanging out at the bowling alley, and he went to get me some water. Right then, something totally unexpected happened. Aaron, of all people, came over to me. I'm not gonna lie, my heart was literally racing with excitement. But what he said next shot me. What are you doing here with Jim the Dim? Shouldn't you be with someone like me? Do you really have to? No way I was gonna just stand there and listen to him diss my bestie. Hey, don't call my friend that. <laughs> just look. He's so dumb. He couldn't even figure out how to get water without making a total fool of himself. What an idiot. Whatever. At least he's not a jerk like you. Fuck off, Aaron. Once Jim finally returned with a water bottle, he could tell something was up just by looking at my face. Um, hey, what's going on here? Is he bothering you? Back off, loser. Can't you see we're having a little chat here? She is my friend. If you're bothering her, you're bothering me too. That's right. We're a team. So just back off and let us enjoy. Aaron's face turned redder than a chip. Chili Pepper at a hot sauce convention as he walked away. And I realized he's definitely not the guy I thought he was. I mean, sure, he's hot, but I should have known better. The dude's got a black belt in meanness. Lesson learned. Next time, check for both hotness and kindness before developing a crush. But the next day at school, when I saw Jim, I was stunned. He had a black eye. What the what? Who did this? It's it's nothing. I, I fell from- Don't you dare give me that fell from the stairs. Spill the beans. What happened? Um, I- I got into a fight with Aaron. He did that? Oh, I am so gonna teach that jerk a lesson. Saying that, I ran to the parking lot where I knew Aaron always hung out with his goonies. And the moment I saw him, I threw a punch at him that left him stunned. You'll regret this, Juniper. I'll make you pay. How? By hitting a girl? You're worse than I thought you were, Aaron. Back off, Jim. It's between Juniper and me now. So, Junie, you think you're tough? Yes, she is. Wanna see how tough she is? Let's settle this with a rap battle. Yeah. I know you've been preparing for it. So, Aaron, are you up for the challenge? Cause Juniper destroyed you here, and she's gonna destroy you there too. Bet I will. I'm not afraid of you, Aaron. We'll see about that. But just so you know, if I win, you'll have to go on a date with me. No way! Oh, you will. And if I lose, I promise I'll apologize to Jim in front of the entire school. Fair deal, right? Bring it on! As Aaron walked away with his friends, reality hit me hard. I had just agreed to a rap battle with Aaron. And if I lost, I'd have to go on a date with him. While I would have been thrilled about the idea before, now that I knew Aaron was a jerk, I had zero interest. 
embarrassed. Jim, I don't know if I can do this. Juniper, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. But think about it. The cash prize is a whopping $5,000. We can split it. You can finally get those poetry books you've been dreaming of. And, well, I can perhaps get that PlayStation 5. My mom's been denying forever. His words sparked a glimmer of hope within me. Maybe, just maybe, I could pull this off. All right, let's do this. And so we went all in, writing and rehearsing like crazy. Aaron and his crew seemed just as determined, and we saw them often practicing at the nearby park every day after school. One rainy afternoon, as I was on my way home, I was about to slip in a puddle, but Aaron caught me just in time. Careful there. I didn't need you to rescue me. Hm, even though I didn't want to, we both ended up finding shelter under a small roof. And there, I felt a bit uneasy. It was a tight space, and we had to stand close, making the situation all the more awkward. I never thought I'd be stuck in the rain with my arch enemy's BFF. I don't know why you think he's your enemy. Jim's an amazing guy. It's you who's a grump all the time. Just like everyone else, you also probably think I'm just a jerk. Duh. You think you've got it all figured out, huh? Well, I've got it figured out that a tough guy act you put on, it's to keep others away. You know, you don't have to be a meanie all the time. Whatever. It's just that things at home aren't good. Everything feels like a mess. Well, everyone has problems, Aaron. I guess it's time you realize that and perhaps show people the goodness in you. <laughs> You're weird, you know that? Takes one to know one, I guess. As Aaron and I kept talking, I realized he wasn't so bad after all. Once the rain finally eased up, we both went our separate ways, but I couldn't help but feel a newfound understanding for Aaron. As the days passed, I saw a new side of Aaron, and it amazed me. One time, I spotted him helping a stray dog find its way home, and another time, he even shared his lunch money with a classmate in need. One day, I noticed Aaron leaving school in a hurry, forgetting his phone. I chased after him on my bicycle, and found him at a hospital, sitting in a room and crying. Hey, Aaron. What are you doing here? You left your phone at school. Is everything okay? You seem upset. It's none of your business. This, this is my mom. She's been in a coma for a long time. I come here every day to see her. Oh my god, I, I had no idea. I hope things get better for you. Yeah, thanks. From that day on, I saw Aaron in a totally new light. And when I told Jim about how Aaron's mom was sick, without revealing the part that I spoke to him, he just rolled his eyes. That guy's a phony. Don't believe everything you hear, Juniper. Jim hated Aaron, but I guess I had started to have feelings for him. One day, at lunchtime when Jim wasn't around, Aaron approached me. Hey, Juniper. Want to catch a movie together? Barbie's playing. I heard it's hilarious. Um, uh, sure. Why not? But just as friends, right? But Barbie? Are you sure? Absolutely. I know you'll love it. If you love it, uh, I'm sure I'll love it. Uh, I'm talking too much. See ya. Day of the movie arrived, and I had come up with a plan to watch Barbie with Aaron without Jim knowing. I told Jim I was feeling sick and needed to rest, which wasn't entirely a lie, because I felt butterflies in my stomach at the thought of spending time with Aaron. At the cinema, Aaron and I laughed our hearts out at the silly scene and Barbie. It was so fun. But as we left the cinema, I was in for a surprise. Jim was standing there looking heartbroken and hurt. Juniper, you lied to me. I thought we were supposed to be best friends. And here you are with Aaron, of all people? It's not what you think, Jim. Aaron is a really nice guy. Juniper, please. This guy, he's a snake. Hey, dude, I'm standing right here. You better shut that mouth. You shut up and stay away from Juniper. Before I knew it, Jim threw a punch at Aaron and knocked him on the ground. I was shocked. Are you crazy, Jim? What's gotten into you? You hurt him badly. But, Juniper, you're my friend. You're supposed to be on my side. Jim, I'll be friends with whoever I want. I can't, uh, I can't stay around you. It's like I don't even know who you are. I then helped Aaron up and walked him home. He could have pressed charges against Jim, but he didn't, which was very kind of him. In the days that followed, Jim tried to contact me many times, but I wasn't ready to talk to him yet. It felt like everything was spinning out of control, and I needed some time to sort out my feelings. So, on the day of the rap battle, instead of participating, I messaged Jim that I wouldn't be joining. All he replied with was a simple okay. Feeling torn and anxious, I decided to at least visit the rap battle to see Aaron perform and support him. But what I saw there left me shook. Jim was trying his best, but Aaron, he was killing it, and not in a good way. Hey Jimbo, you lost your friend. Now you're on your own. 
My tricks played well. She fell for my lies. What a surprise. To the cinema. Took her. She didn't know. Faked about my mom. Perfect sorrowful show. She thought I'd changed. But it was just a facade. Remember that call? I tipped you off. So odd. To gain her sympathy, I took a punch so tough. Now she's on my hook. My power to show, it's enough. My emotions went wild as I heard Aaron's hurtful words. Seeing Jim's pained expression, it hit me hard. He was right about Aaron's tricks. It all clicked. He had done the whole nice guy act to distract me from the rap battle. He messed with the wrong girl. Without even thinking, I jumped on the stage next to Jim. Jim, my buddy, you know I got your back. Through thick and thin, we never lack. Fake friends leave, but we stand tall. Bonds unbreakable, never gonna fall. They're just haters, but we're the real deal, and that's all. As for you, Aaron, you're a fake, always playing games. Lies manipulation, it's all the same. Emily Dickinson said, tell the truth, but tell it's land. But your lies won't fool me, they won't enchant. With Jim, I stand firm, your tricks won't grant. Hearing this, Jim jumped up and down and hugged me tight. I knew you'd come. I had to. Now come on, let's win this thing. Jim and I were doing amazing. We were spitting verses in the mic like we were on fire. In the end, it was us against Aaron and his gang, and I decided to bring my A-game and finish him once and for all. But before I could speak, Jim took the mic and left me totally blown. You call my friend naive, but let me retort. She's like a rainbow, shining bright, never short. Like twinkle, twinkle, little star, she'll reach for the sky. While you're stuck in the dark, telling lie after lie. Life's a journey, not a devious scheme. In the little engine that could, she follows her dream. She'll rise and shine while you're left in the dark. With no true friend, no real spark. The rap battle ended. Jim dropped the mic, leaving Aaron speechless. Wait, she? How did you do that? Learned from you, Juniper. In the end, we totally nailed it and won the cash prize. As Aaron tried to get off the stage, I quickly called out his name. Hey, Aaron, remember the deal? Apologize to Jim in front of everyone. Come on. Yeah, come back on stage. Aaron's face turned red as a tomato, and like a kid who was punished, he took the mic and apologized to Jim. Now that was a mic drop. Once we left the venue, Jim took me straight to the bookshop where my grandma's book was. Get that poetry book you've always wanted. But it's not just my money. We both won. You get part two. No, I wanted to win just for you, Juniper. OMG, you're the best friend ever, Jim. Remember, true friends got your back. No matter what, fake people and lies can't break real friendship. Trust your buddies.